Hi guys, my name is Karthik and today in this video, I'm going to show you how I built my own custom Playwright MCP server for Cloud Anthropic. If you remember a couple of days before I talked about something called as MCP server or always called as the model context protocol, which can help you bridge the gap between the AI model versus your local data. The local data can be of anything. It can be your SQL server, it can be your GitHub repository, or it can be even your local browser. So in this case, we are going to be seeing how we can bridge the gap between the AI model with your local browser. So with this power of MCP server, we can use our Playwright code to run on the local browser to perform the action on the browser. We can automate the browser. We can do the web scraping of the browser with the same code that we write for the player automation testing but just with the power of the MCP protocol. That's what we are going to see in this particular video, like how I built everything from the scratch. And once again, if you have not really heard about MCP before, which I have spoken in my couple of videos, MCP stands for Model Contest Protocol, which is an open source standard designed to help AI assistants more effectively by connecting them to a system and to the tool where relevant data reside. And in this case, I told you, because we'll be talking about the browser automation, the local browser is the context that we are going to be giving it to the AI model. And with the power of the MCP, we can really remove the problem with the context because now we are giving the context aware details to the MCP server and the MCP server is then going to translate it to the model so that model can understand what it is going to perform the action. And that's exactly what we are going to be discussing in this particular video. But before I jump into the more theoretical aspect of it and how I did everything, I'm going to quickly show you a demo of how I actually did. As you can see over here, I'm trying to navigate to a website like eaapp.somi.com over here and the Cloud Anthropic is just opening the entire browser for me and it is trying to wait automatically for the page to load. You see that I have not even defined anything like wait for the page to load, something like that. It is doing everything for me automatically with the power of the artificial intelligence. And once it does that, you will notice that it is performing the action that I have specified on the text. So it's just like a plain text that I have told to log in by clicking the login button and perform the login operation. It is doing everything for me. And note that over there, I am going to perform everything on the playwright operation, like playwright tool. So the clicking operation, filling operation, and data entry operation, and like realistic data entry operation, everything is happening for me with the power of the artificial intelligence. And it does everything, and then it gives me an entire summary of what exactly has really happened behind the scene with the cloud and with the power of the playwright. So this is really cool because now we have the ability to tell that, hey, this particular code that I wanted to run, but with the power of the MCP protocol, and this is the custom server that I have got, which I need to use to perform this operation. And that is exactly what I wanted to build. And that is what I have built over here. I have also shown how it is done with the puppeteer from the official uh, MCP server. And this is like an forked version and I have built it for the playwright itself. And the one thing which I have also not shown in this particular plugin is this one. As you can see over here, if you just go to the start new chat, and if you click this attach for from the MCP server, you'll also notice that I have got the integration of the browser console log for the playwright. I can do that as well. And then I can start asking the question from here and it does things for you and it stores the browser console log for you on this particular file. You can also do that with this particular extension. And the same thing we can do with the screenshot, with the video attachment and test report. Everything can be done pretty much like how we did for the puppeteer, but in here for the playwright. And that's how I have built it. And once again, I'm going to quickly show you how the code repository is going to look like and where it is residing and how you can start working with it. So if you just go to uh, the github.com slash execute automation and it was here, you can see that there are repositories and this is the one, the MCP playwright. This is the repository which is also going to be part of the official MCP server pretty soon because the PR is there. It should be added pretty quickly, but I'm just waiting for the team to respond. But you can notice that this is already a working model of the MCP server over here. And you can see that the details of how I have did. So it is pretty straightforward. All you have to do it is uh, this is the detail, like the everything which this particular Playwright MCP server does. But for you to get started with, all you have to do it for you is you need to clone this particular repository within your local machine, which is this one. 
And then you can run this command, npm run build and then npm run link. And once you do that, you can then specify the server that you are running through and that should do things for you over there. This is quite straightforward, guys, and this is so easy to do it. So I'm going to quickly jump into the same action like what I have did over here. I can show you how the execution is going to work. So for that, I'm going to open my terminal over here, which is the hyper terminal, cd, try out, uh, and then mkdir of the mcp playwright, or maybe just like mcp server cd mcp server and then i'm gonna say uh, git clone oops sorry i did not copy this one i guess so let me just copy this particular path and then paste it over here that's gonna clone things for me and if you just go to the mcp server over here and if you just list the file these are the files that i have got over here let me quickly show you the entire source code of what i have written there so if you just go to the particular repository and if you go, there is this called source and we have got the uh, package.json and over here you can see that the package.json has got the information like what are the dependencies required. And you can see the dependencies I have got is the model context protocol SDK uh, and there is this playwright and there is this playwright uh, browser Chromium because we really need the browser uh, Chromium to be launched. So at the moment, you can see that the only browser which is support is Chromium. So if you want to work with multiple different browser, then you probably need to add all the browser support as well. Because as we know that playwright really downloads the browser before it perform any operation, we gotta be downloading this as well. So that's the reason why I have added this dependencies over here. And then the rest of the code is very, very straightforward. All you have to do is just follow the pattern like how the code needs to be written. For instance, you need to import the STDIO server transport and the server itself, and then the call to request schema, call to resource request schema, tool request schema, and these are the patterns which has been followed, which you need to follow to write this code. And then all you have to do it is you need to write all the different tools which the playwright does support. They, they, they say it as tool because these are the intents which are being used by the Claude uh, AI. So uh, you can see that it does the playwright navigation, playwright screenshot, playwright click. Uh, and these are things which in reality, the playwright uh, is going to be doing for me. But this these are the input schemas which are used by the Claude AI itself. But where is the actual code which does this operation. So if you just control F, control V, uh, and if you search that, you see that I have written an entire switch case statement over here, handle tools call. This handle tool call method, which is basically like, an, like a switch case uh, statement, where the AI is going to pass the switch statement with the case like name there. For instance, if you're going to be performing a navigate operation, then this is the case which is going to be called and again, you may ask like, Karthik, how does that happen? That's the magic. That's where AI comes in. So if it, if it needs to navigate, then it is going to, it knows that it has to navigate there. So it's going to call this particular case. And that's the one thing which is very interesting with the AI because it's not just the code which does everything for you, but AI also intervene in between to write things for you or make things to happen for you, which is pretty cool. And you see that it is going to be navigating over here with the play underscore navigate you are essentially doing the same playwright code that we always write, the page.go to operation. I mean, we can write the browser context um, and then we perform the operation. Like I have not really called the new browser context to do that. It's just like directly the page and then go to context. So, but if you go to the ensure uh, browser method, all I'm doing it is I'm just launching the Chrome browser, which headless as false and then calling the new context over there and then performing the rest of the operation. And the same thing goes for the playwright screenshot, which is gonna take a screenshot for me. Uh, and also, you know what, because it is gonna be coming up as a binary format, like base64 format, I need to convert that, I need to at attach it so that this resource can be available for the cloud uh, desktop or the cloud application itself. That's why you need to do this operation there. Uh, and, and then finally, we need to perform the playwright click operation, which is going to be the page dot click and the selector over there. And you see that, uh, Karthik, how is the selector is going to be known by this particular cloud? So if you just go to the operation that it just performed there, uh, for this particular 
splitted underscore click, you may notice that we are going to be uh, just saying that click the login link over here. I'm just going to say like click login link, but I, I have not really told any locators. But you notice that the AI is so intelligent or smart enough to tell me that, okay, this is the selector like a href of the accounts login that it needs to click. And this is the type uh, as the text. And this is the text that it is trying to be clicked. And if there is any error, then it's going to return as false. So it knows what intent it has to perform and it also records everything for you there. Similarly for the filling operation, that's exactly what this is doing, like filled input, like username uh, with admin there, because that's what we have told, like in the input login page, enter the username and password as admin and password respectively and perform the login. So while I just say like perform the login, it also knows that I need to click the login button, with the submit operation. So everything, just happens over there like fill operation uh, and similarly the select drop down operation and hover operations and stuff we can keep on adding even more in this particular code for instance if you wanted to uh, go and uh, switch to a different tab or open up a drop down and uh, handle an overlay window or maybe you can also take a report and then attach the report we can keep on doing that i have already make this particular code as a public uh, code in this particular repository. So please feel free to go and uh, add your pull request here. I will go and update the particular pull request. I'll also merge that pull request within this particular branch if it just works fine. So that will be great. So we can keep evolving this particular code base over here and then we can start working with it. And once again, the configurations of this particular code and working with it is all quite straightforward. All you have to do it is just go to the uh, code over there uh, and uh, go and change the uh, application and support of the cloud, cloud desktop computer.json file, which is the place where you are going to be defining the source code that you're going to be executing. And then once it executes, then that's all. Your code is just going to work fine as expected. So this is how I actually built this particular MCP Playwright server. I know this is like a short video, but once again, this is the detail that you really need to know how you can build your own MCP server as well. And we can leverage the power of the MCP server, not just with a playwright, but we can do the same thing for the WebDriver IO if you wanted to. Same thing for Selenium and also for uh, for Cypress if you wanted to. So we can keep on extending this particular MCP server for each and every single tool. And once they get official, it is going to be very, very helpful for the community who are going to be using this MCP server their own while running their automation testing. This is amazing guys and this is quite exciting for me to add or make a contribution uh, to the community for uh, for the playwright uh, for the MCP server. So feel free to clone this particular repo or fork this repo, uh, start adding uh, more features to it, create a pull request and we can keep growing this particular repository. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys have a great day.